up with me, baby, don't fast. One more dance with ya, just one more dance with ya. Let this music move your soul, let your body lose control. Don't be scared, baby, just move, move with me. Communication, consent, and exploration are the topics for tonight. I'm Mister. I'm the ringleader of this wonderful little shit show of a circus. Uh, we have others joining us. They're running a smidge behind, um, or smudge, maybe. I think they said. I don't know. But either way, this is the final part of our sex ed series, part three. Hopefully, you've seen the other two parts. If not, go back and watch them, and look for the highlight reels coming out soon. Um, like I said, communication, consent, and exploration are what tonight's all about. I'm Mister. I run Kink Slayer. And yeah, and that's what hosts this. This is our Monday Munch. We do it every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. And we cover a wide variety of topics, like I said, from sex ed all the way to relationships, kinks, um, the more taboo topics, and all kinds of things. So I am uh, super, super happy to be here. And I'm happy to have a laugh. We have a legal. Hi, laugh. Hi, legal. Hi. Arson and Laver here. Thank y'all for being here as always. I think Alice and Dream will be here shortly. Uh, Ray is not with us tonight. They are hunkering down for a hurricane that's about to hit down there. Uh, right now it's a tropical storm last I saw, but it could get up to a category two or three over the next day or so before it makes landfall in the the uh, Gulf side of Florida. So, yeah. Anyway, that's who I am. And this is Monday Munch. Welcome, everybody. Super happy everybody's here. Anybody who tunes in late, hello. How are you? Glad you're here. Um, I like our topics tonight. I'm excited about communication, consent, and exploration. We said it three times now. That's right. But I don't think anybody's going to be able to beat. We can't go earlier than. What? We always wonder what the record will be for the latest. Now we have oh, the record for the earliest. You can't yes. go faster than one second. One second into munch. You're correct. I win. <laughs> it's an ongoing uh, thing because communication is so very important to all of us in everything that we do. We talk about communication. This is a sign language for communication. We talk about that on munch quite frequently. So speaking of sign language in our little intermission, the show's about two hours long usually, so about 11 o'clock or so. We'll put on a little video. I'll just give everybody a chance for bathroom breaks and all that stuff. But, uh, no, wait for the video. Go pee while somebody's talking. Yeah, you know, but, but either way, it gives us a chance to go. We've watched it already. Um, but it is about, it's about five minutes long. It covers a lot of the sign language that is uh, consent-based, yes, no. Mm -hmm. Um, it even, even covers like fucking, I don't know, maybe hug, hug bro hugs, hug. like, yeah, that was cute, <laughs> that was cute audio. Um, but so hopefully everybody <laughs> sticks around for all that. I'm glad it's everybody's great. here. Um, I think it's funny. I'm not sure if, uh, Arson is, if I remember right, Arson is a partner of Alice's. Either way, oh, the, the two people that are here for Alice for sure are here before Alice is, and it's great. I love it. It's pumpkin spice season. It is absolutely white girl season. Not a sponsor, but it probably should be. Which means we are like two months away from yoga pants and fuzzy boots. Oh, okay. And yeah. my eyes will not go above waist level for like the rest of the year. Coming out of sundress season. Mm -hmm. That's when it goes Into from yoga knee pants level and fuzzy up. boots. Got it. I'm absolutely a pervert in real life. Let's put that out there. <laughs> not worse than me, though. Oh, no, not even close. No. Mm -mm. Um, so, a couple key points we'll talk about tonight once everybody kind of gets in here is the ways you communicate. Um, we're going to discuss, you know, using, like, proper anatomy terms that way. In, in the event of something bad being going on with, with a kid or something like that, they know how to say the word penis and vagina, and they know what that means. Um, you know, talking about your sexual readiness um, as puberty rolls on. I mean, I, I ended up losing my virginity at a very young age, and uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I was ready for it. I knew I was ready for it. Hi, Ray. Um, I knew I was ready for it. Even looking back, I'm, I would still say that it was a conscious decision made, not just made because oh, I wanted to find out what sex was like. Or coerced into it or... No, no, absolutely not. It was a birthday present. You don't turn down birthday presents, okay? <laughs> Especially one that no one else could ever get you. I mean, there is that song. Well, you can have birthday sex, but the birthday sex for the first time, you can only have that once. That that That's pretty awesome. Uh, so, good mm -hmm. as to her. Right, um, right, right. Hope she's doing well. <laughs> My birthday is in two months, in a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll talk about how to, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit last week, but STI is disclosing things like that, having those mm -hmm. conversations. Um, birth control whether you know, if you feel like you're responsible for it or not or, or how that works out everything at the end of the day will come down to just generalized communication um, but it goes deeper than that that's just kind of a way to sum it all up is to say communicate um, but how you communicate is just as important as to what you communicate we'll cover consent consent is always um Consent is fries. I never remember what fries is off the top of my head. I know it's freely given, uh, reversible, mm. idiot proof. Uh, no. <laughs> Hold on just a second. Sorry. As always, I'm not. Okay, yeah, so it's freely given, reversible, informed, informed. enthusiastic, okay. and specific. Idiot proof should be one of them, but I don't think it is. I knew enthusiastic was in there, but my brain got stuck because I knew enthusiastic informed. <laughs> it was the next word was an I word. And I didn't remember the informed, but real quick though, good. Glad you're safe there, Ray. Um, wherever you are. I was watching a little bit of the weather when we went to pick up our coffee earlier and they were showing how the Gulf Streams that warming up is gonna clash with that tropical storm and it's gonna increase the the power of it as it approaches the coasts of Florida. So absolutely be safe. Or Keep they're completely wrong. Please. Or they're completely wrong. But they're only wrong like here. Honestly. Yeah. Let's just I mean uh, not to be the not to be the Debbie down here. They're only wrong about us getting snow. We've got company. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I heard that there were two people here for me. Absolutely. Three, if you count, right? Well, hello, hello. Sorry, um, I was but, late. Uh, life happens. There's far more important shit than me. I promise. <laughs> hmm. Oh, no, that's neat. Hold on. So we were kind of discussing like the basic bullet points of what we'll talk about tonight and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Ray. We did stop with enthusiastic, uh, specific, and of course, laugh. Yeah, I know. I can't. I can't be on stream for more than thirty seconds without someone trying to antagonize a praise king. <laughs> well, that's the fun of it. Oh, okay. And um, so it says it can be fries or it can be crisp. Considered, reversible, informed, specific, and participatory. That's a, another new acronym. I don't know when this started. It does say something about pumpkin spice, so I imagine it might be pretty new. But I'm I'm confused about the considered thing. You shouldn't consider. Um, so like, th th thought about. Okay, it says we love considered because while we can't fully erase the power dynamics, systematic racism, and other effects of oppression that may freely given consent difficult, we consider all the factors and information when ultimately making decisions about whether to give or withhold consent. Okay, cool, cool, cool. This requires time and space for the actors to get the information that they need and consider all the potential repercussions associated with their decisions. Mm -hmm. In practice, it looks like making structural changes to give actors adequate time to consider requests, role requirements, through communication on the specifics of the moment. Be a fun drinking game for Munch, because we've said communication like a thousand times now. Yeah. At least I, I did get the I did get the record, though, Alice. That was the first thing out of my mouth. Communication. <laughs> 
So what's going to have to happen is one of the times where I'm actually on time, I'm going to have to see if I can beat you to saying it. Oh, yeah. That's going to be... Yeah, we'll have to race that one. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. What am I doing? What am I doing? Um, the last um, exploration. Oh, exploration. So this is going to be more about learning how to explore your own body, explore things with your partner, mm -hmm. kind of how to pace things, you know, what works best for you, all those things. And... Um, yeah, and of course, it goes back into the communication and consent, and that's why it's last. You can't have, uh, you can't explore safely without either of those. So, yeah. So, I really, I, truly, I don't know what the fuck else we could say about communication, though. Um, we talk about it every week, but specifically in sex ed terms, I guess, um, wrapping it back up to the first week, uh, anatomy, uh, what I said earlier was it was super important for even children to know proper anatomy, you know, terms just in case they need to use those terms for a very serious reason. So I think that's always something important. But in the same breath, you're not wrong if you and your partner want to have nicknames or different things to say for different acts because maybe you have little ears around or just company or just people that don't need to hear that you want to go home and get railed. Rhinoceros. So, so the point is to make sure the person you're talking to knows. Understands yeah. and knows. So like, so like if you have like little in jokes and nicknames, absolutely mm -hmm. use those. But if you're talking to someone you don't have those with, you should use the correct names for things. Right. <laughs> um, I am curious though to see with the, the, the scope of like life and bodies changing and stuff like that, if there will be any new, like almost slang terminology before it becomes like an official terminology for, for like certain people that may be going through transition and making changes and, and having a more nuanced word for certain things, you know, or if that'll end up oh, happening. Yeah. It already, it, it already does. Um, for, for a lot of people, like uh, a lot of trans femmes or what I can speak for, uh, well, the, the name that's normally used is girl dick or girl cock. That, okay. can, get, uh, that can get abbreviated to gawk, mm. which happens all the time. Oh. Which is ironically the noise you make when you choke on one. <laughs> <laughs> and like in the, in the, my page and my discord, um, I, I go by void, so instead of saying girl cock, we say void cock or vok. Okay. Vok. So it's so it's a little more nuanced in that way, um, but I wonder, like like medically, if the, as they go more into anatomy, physiology, and and even psychology, what what's going to change there as they find new hormones, new components of the brain that change, things like that. Go ahead. Um. The, the end product of a lot of like surgical stuff is the, the actual name of the thing, which is Neo in front of it. So like if I were to get bottom surgery to have a vagina, it would be Neo vagina. Okay. okay. So they kind of just jumped ahead of that for now, at least it, like yeah. to give it a generalized term. Awesome. Okay. Well, that's, and see, that's important to know too. Um, you know, especially if you know, teenagers that are changing and, and even uh, adults that are changing. Um, legal says for us trans masks, we call our bottom growth our T-dicks. Okay, <laughs> okay. It's, it's a whole new world to me now. You always teach me stuff, uh, <laughs> Alice. I'm about to say lab, you're not lab at all. <laughs> and lab didn't even answer that, so I don't know where. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's why I ask, and that's why I'm not such an asshole these days because I genuinely have learned that there's a complete other world that I'm one, not a part of, but two, want to learn about so I can be more accepting and inclusive of. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate all that information that everybody gives me for sure. So you said there wasn't a lot to talk about consent? No, no, there's, there's always so tons much of to consent, talk about consent for sure. We can talk about consent all day. Or not. No, I'm sorry. Communication. I used the wrong word because he's got consent up on the screen. I'm sorry. This, you said communication. There's not much. 
there's that we there's haven't like said yet. so much well it's <laughs> it's okay to repeat ourselves on right. the important part hello mr pringles man you're staring at me <laughs> anyway <laughs> um <laughs> darn it <laughs> um the communication part really starts with you and that's something i'm always very avid about is making sure that you're doing your part within your life to communicate your needs, wants, and desires. And boundaries. Boundaries, thank you. And to know them and know that they, they can and will change, but at your own comfort and pace. And that's perfectly acceptable and it needs to be perfectly acceptable to any partner that you may be with Absolutely. or even a friend anyone who might be interacting with you should be accepting of your boundaries yep. well should unfortunately be. can't control our work life and <laughs> but, uh... but you know what you really can't and it really starts with you. I've actually learned that a lot. So one thing I've learned lately, um, I've been on my Gary V shit for a while, but like really listen to him. And he's, he talks a lot about candor being, you know, using a lot of candor when you speak and new word for me. It, it is like, I mean, I've, I've known what the word is, but I'm trying to incorporate it more in my vocabulary rather than just saying I'm brutally honest or I'm just an asshole that's going to tell you how it is or whatever. I, I like that word much better to, to use candor when you speak. Go ahead. Candor basically means talking like an autistic person. Hmm. Direct, not unnecessarily complicated. And if there's confusion, say so directly and you'll get an explanation. Like, this is what I mean. Okay. I like that. Okay. So this is, this is my new word. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let me make sure I'm saying it right. Say it. Candor. Candor. Mm hmm it wasn't that tricky or anything. All right, we got this, y'all. <laughs> I believe in you, and I believe in me, and I believe in all of us. We can be more candor. Did I say it right? That's it. Yeah. Um, candor is like the the noun. If you're using an adjective, it's candid. Like the camera. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's Let's why they think it's that in my head right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with. Alice's definition. That <laughs> yeah. Really, and really like it, it, straight it, to the point. It was very, it was very candid. <laughs> and if there's confusion, we figure that shit out. I mean, that's, that's perfect. For a, yeah. for like an, a definition, um, candor is a noun that refers to the quality of being honest, straightforward, and sincere in one's words, words and actions. It involves being truthful with a with and open without any hidden let me try that again because i'm going to need that for a clip candor is a noun that refers to the quality of being honest straightforward and sincere in one's words and actions it involves being truthful and open without any hidden motives or agendas it is often associated with integrity and authenticity that's why i like we don't have a big audience i can like back the fuck up and like let me let me fix that real quick <laughs> but let's be real if it was, because if I have like a thousand people watching, like you guys hold the fuck up, I gotta fix that. This is much. Yeah. If you if you have a big audience and you go, hey, let me fix that, you're being candid. There you go. See. It's Boom. <laughs> so. Hello, one, Dream. Oh, his Dream in the audience. <laughs> Hi. You can come on the screen if you'd like. You have the link. Bzz, bzz. But. I'm buzzing. Um, oh, so the next kind of point to, uh, communication, discussing sexual readiness openly as puberty tends to impact emotions and the thought process of young people. <laughs> it's like I said, when I was, you know, I lost like, so the funny part was for my 13th birthday, I got a pack of condoms. Me too. We've talked about this though. It's crazy. I just happened to go use them like that day. So it's the, <laughs> <didn't wait> long. <laughs> you turn into a teen. Mm -hmm. So it's like the milestone. I feel, I don't know anybody else 
Did y'all get a pack of condoms for 13th birthday <laughs> by any chance? I got mine at 10. <laughs> Holy shit. And I got told ex explicitly, if you get anyone pregnant, I'm going to kill you. Tell mm. me if you need more. You know what, though? Can't, can't knock that. No. 10's I mean, a little yeah. young, I feel, but... Kill you is a little harsh, I feel, yeah. but, you know, Whatever. you know. Well, as long as you understood and it was communicated to you that you had the option of having more if you needed them, you know. That's that's, that's the cool. key part of that is having that open line of communication. That's the there. cool part. You don't You could just like make them take care of your sister's baby for a day. Oh, so Ray says there's nothing vulgar about parents having open discussions about sexuality mm -hmm. and readiness with the children. Absolutely not. Um, Am I in charge of this? Today? Look at you. There you go. <laughs> um, it it's all about. I do feel like there's a level of appropriateness. Obviously, you don't want to talk to your twelve year old about you know handcuffs and. Things like that. It may be a topic of conversation at some point, but you know, don't just be like, "Here's some handcuffs. Here's some lube. Have a good weekend." If they ask, you should talk about it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of a lot of parents tend to avoid that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's the quicker we stop acting like sex is some embarrassing thing, the quicker the world can be a little more educated. Not to make this like all about me, but another milestone I remember <laughs> when I was younger. Um, I found a condom on the school bus when I was like 10 years old. And I did not have any idea what it was. And when I went home, I asked my sister, you know, what was that? And then asked my mother, what, what was that? And I wasn't told at that age that that's what that was. I was, you know, I was scolded for it, but it, it was way later that I learned what those were. But 13, well, I guess it wasn't that much later, was it? <laughs> they were <laughs> like, I was oh, younger. I was gonna like, they were just like, oh, she's found one. We might as well give her some. <laughs> I remember it being a big fiasco and everything like the whole bus was like ew gross it's a condom and i'm like what's a condom and then the bully boy on the bus picks it up with a pencil and you know shoves it in everybody's face on the way up to the trash can as many times i've heard this story i've never heard that part i didn't know it was open oh yeah it was open and pulled out <laughs> oh like, so it wasn't like used though I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Like, I just... Listen, I can't remember if it happened when I was 10. Or <laughs> but yeah, That's it was sure. actually it made out to be a little bit of a traumatic experience because I wasn't just told what it was. That would have made it so much, so much different. Right. Yeah, as for mine. As a condom, it's used for protection yeah. with sex and i would have been like okay cool <laughs> i know all those things let's go now it all makes sense <laughs> mine was you know is it's it tends to be like a, a, a boy's rite of passage when he becomes a teenager you know the, the dad or the uncle or somebody gets some condoms um it was meant to embarrass me, but it just so happened that I had talked to my girlfriend and we had discussed it and we were okay with it. And we thought we were ready for that. And I was ready for it. Like I was like, we were good to go. You mean to tell me, mister, you guys communicated? We absolutely communicated, you communicated and had consent? consent. That's hot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, to me, I laughed. I wasn't embarrassed. I laughed about it because I knew they were about to get used. Um, so. <laughs> and that was something that we actually, you know, had, had talked about. I mean, you know, my, my interest in, in sex education isn't some new found thing. It's, you know, I've been this way like my whole life. I took that little stupid class of you have a penis, you're going to stink, you need deodorant, you know, you're going to bleed and you have a vagina. 
and that was like the length, like the whole extent of the sex ed talk until at least middle school, and we got the health discussion where you know you're gonna get herpes and your dick's gonna fall off. No, that one was scary. Um, <laughs> but I've always been interested in the education of it, you know, to, to learn to make sure that I'm doing the right thing and you know, how things should work, you know, how to do things properly and stuff like that. Um, so. So I've, I've taught myself quite a bit. I've forgotten a lot, probably, but, you know. <laughs> it's okay for refreshers. Oh, absolutely. And that's a lot of what all of this is. Teaching ourselves, others, refreshing. Mm -hmm. So, now, do, do we feel like we should wait? until a child starts puberty or is approaching puberty i know that the age is so varied now um i've seen reports of kids as young as like seven and eight starting to go through puberty um as as late as like kids that are like 14 that haven't even started puberty yet um like do you just give the conversation first and then as it happens you just talk more about it or do you think you should just wait until it starts I think I would wait until the first time they ask a question related to it and then just sit down and be like, all right, here, here's the basics. Here's what you need to know to be safe. And if you need more information about something specific later, come back and ask again. So you might have a shy child that may never, ever bring that up. If, if your child has problems talking to you, that's not a, uh, that's not a sex ed problem. That's a parenting problem. Mm -hmm. I I guarantee you when I was a kid, I was annoying everyone who would listen. And <laughs> someone who was less autistic as a kid would still be comfortable asking questions if they felt safe with that adult. Yeah. yeah it's only until you get jumped on or snapped at or made to feel like an idiot. Then you kind of start to push away that, that part of you. Well, <laughs> no one's calling you out. Loud. <laughs> um, so more on to the uh, the not even the adult side, just the the sexual relationship side of things. Once you have a sexual relationship, um, or know anything about like STIs, potential things like that. Um, once again, communication is important to let somebody know either you. You have something. Mm -hmm. uh, you have gotten rid of something, like it's you know a past experience, whatever. Um, just to, just to make sure that everybody's kind of on the same page. Um, which, before we get into the SCI aspect of it, always brings up everybody is so hyper focused on body count, and that drives me nuts. Like, I mean. I look at it like it, it's it's a trophy. Like I'm not gonna you know, look down on you for it. It just shows me like how many times have you played this game and how good are you at it. Yeah. It's not necessarily That's how many part. times you've played it or how good you're at it. That that second part isn't necessarily tied to the number of people that no, could be how many people are disappointed. You silly goose. <laughs> correlation a little you gotta you know just like on the off chance not very yeah. likely i know they're not actually correlated but not to get us copywritten but there's a country song about a girl that goes and gets dicked down in, in dallas dallas and railed out in raleigh yeah and they wanted her you back you can still he get around and have all kinds <laughs> and like it doesn't matter if you're good at it or well, that's that's true. I'm sorry. But. No, no, that's absolutely true. I just, you know, to me, I think that's how a lot of people look at it. Either they see people as, oh, they know what they're doing because their body count is high, or they are just a disgusting person because their body count is high. Or, as, as someone with an unreasonably high body count, um, a lot of people will assume I'm noncommittal in my relationships. Okay, yeah. Because I've I've been with so many people that obviously I'm just going to move on to the next attractive person when I get there. Oh, okay, so like, is they think you're just waiting for the next for the next one to show up? Yeah. 
Yeah, I see it. My count's actually pretty low. We talked about this the other day. It's con compared to what people think my body count is. Damn, my yes. body count is like marginal compared to it. I think I'm at like I, 15, 16. With, with my uh, time as a sex worker, I have a personal and a professional body count. That's that actually, that's to me, that's fair. That's smart. Um, same act, both, different reasons. So, both of which are in the triple digits. Oh, yeah. Good job. Way to go there, Barney Stinson. <laughs> I'm going to need that joke explained. I didn't get uh, it. So, uh, have you ever watched How I Met Your Mother? No. Okay. So, Neil Patrick Harris, um, you know who that is, all right? I do. Yeah. Okay. So, he plays Barney Stinson. Ironically, the gay man plays the womanizer. Um, and there's an episode about him hitting his 200th and like, it's a big deal and all that stuff. And it's just fucking great. And like, it's just, it's a constant, it's, it's part, it's part of his, his whole character arc of who he is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, I don't know. So like you talking about triple digits just made me think of that. Cause I just watched that last night before I went to bed. <laughs> Do you guys think it's okay to be a person like myself and not have like, um, I'd have to sit down with a notebook and probably keep that notebook with me for like, three months before I could figure out and remember because yes, I've had some meaningless sex mm -hmm. that I can't fucking remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I don't think, I think, like I said, there's too much pressure and weight put on a body count. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean anything unless we're talking like, you know, trying to see who fucked the most people at the orgy last night have a Lord of the Rings style battle for the highest body count that way. But yeah. <laughs> that honestly sounds like fun. <laughs> that actually would be pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, no, there's, there's not anything wrong with like not being like precise. Cause you, you would like know the, the ballpark range of like the number of people, but not like the specific to the digit number. Right. Right. I mean, I guess within like the 10 or so. There you go. And that's fine. As long as you're honest about it and be like, hey, there's probably some in there that I don't remember. Yeah. Communication. Just, there's probably like 10 that I don't remember. I just <laughs> remembered one the other day. It was like, mm -mm, nope, they don't count. <laughs> I think it's okay not to count people either. No. I, uh, Whatever, it's your own number. I actually, <laughs> I mean. For, I, for my two numbers, I kept a running track the whole time because it was like the only thing that I was like insecure teenage me could brag about. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I feel that. Yeah. And then I, from like 12 to 18, I'd already had six years of keeping a body count, so I just kept going with it. There you go, keep on, you might as well. <laughs> I had a notebook with little little price tag polka dot stickers on it, and I would write <laughs> names. Huh? Like, check. <laughs> well, this is not good. Is this bad? We should, I should, I'm just sharing and being honest. I feel like since it doesn't add up in one way or another, unless you contract an STI for some, you know, somehow, I don't think. Um, what are you doing? Just moving the thing so I can see my beautiful face on the big screen. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think. I don't think. I do want to make sure I don't have any pop outs. I'll endorse it. You don't owe anyone to tell them your body count. If that's that big of a problem for them and it's very superficial of them and you're probably better off anyway. It's my opinion, of course, but if you get tested and you, you test negative for like any STI, they have no reason to have access to that information. If you don't want to share it. Mm -hmm. Tell them, you know, you're not going to violate HIPAA. Mm -hmm. They don't have to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mr. No. <laughs> I mean, it's an excuse, you know, like I can't, I can't violate like HIPAA, <laughs> doctor patient confidence. No, it goes like this, you guys. I don't want to discuss that or remember that or, you know, I don't want to have that conversation because yeah. I don't want to have that conversation. <laughs> yeah. So just set it as a boundary. Hey, here are my test results. I am not going to give you anything and I don't want to talk about it any further than that. And, mm -hmm. and if they don't respect that, give them the yeet. Yep. It's but not, if they do, ouch, give them a lot more than the yeet. Yep. Well, see, <laughs> the, the problem I have with it is like in, in society, there's such a, you know, like I said, there's, there's a lot of weight on a body count. But 
the the dumbest phrase I ever heard was, you know, what's better, a key that unlocks any lock or a lock that can be unlocked by any key. Basically saying that men that have more sex are more valuable than women that have a lot of sex. It gets into that whole slut shaming and all that stuff. And that's, that's why it bothers me. It's like you, the number of partners you have genuinely has no uh, outcome or correlation to how your vagina is shaped or tightened or all those things. Go ahead, Alice. If it's slut shaming, it'll apply to men and women equally who are slutty and people who aren't either of those but are slutty. Um, when it's just against women, it's just misogyny. Okay, okay. I can deal with that. Keep so, up with the comments yeah, yeah, my right. commenter was not keeping that up. Um, let's see. Body count's huge. I don't feel so a, Okay, so we have to go back, back like five minutes. Okay. Um, a range rather than an actual number. Uh, body count doesn't matter to me. Being demisexual, I care about you as a person, how you make me feel when I'm with you. Some parties are a little hazy for my early 20s. Same. Same. Uh, Good times, though. <coughs> me. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, I've been with quite a few people because they'll say, I'll change your mind, as shitty as it is, a few times, or just to tell them otherwise. That that sounds like you just want to hurt some feelings, and I love it. <laughs> like, oh, you're going you to change my mind. Okay, well, let's go, little man. <laughs> uh, that is. Um, that's allowed. Get tested. This is stupid. Okay, I like that. I'm not comfortable talking sex most of the time outside of safe people. Even then, it makes me uncomfortable. So I would tell if I was asked by a close person, I would. Okay, that's cool. Um, and that's that's once again, that's your own boundary. Mm -hmm. So, like, as a person outside of that boundary, if someone said that to me. That means don't ask. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello, Matt. Thank you for joining. Hi. Hello, hello. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, so communicating about like birth control. I think it's your decision. It comes down to like the. It, to me, it's the, the women's rights. It's right in there with the abortion issue. We can discuss it, but ultimately it's still your decision. And if you want to be on birth control, so be it. If I want to have kids and you don't want to, then our relationship needs to be reevaluated. You know, mm -hmm. If you don't want to go on birth control and I want you to, then I guess I need to get a, wear condoms and go get my own vasectomy. Like I have options to make myself. Go ahead, Alice. So what birth control is and isn't in place needs to be discussed. And like that needs to be something that's agreed to by both parties to yeah, an extent. Yeah. And then when you have like, if someone's saying, I don't want to get pregnant, I'm on the pill. If you're going to fuck me, you're going to use a condom. Those are boundaries. And like those should be communicated and respected. A thousand percent. <laughs> um, I, I like where you were at with like the relationship should be reevaluated. Because of if, if it's a deal breaker for someone, that doesn't mean the other person should compromise what they consent to. Right. You know, if for some reason I absolutely had to have sex without a condom, and when, when Jen and I had that conversation of starting to wear condoms, if I absolutely had to have that, it would have been, you know, okay, maybe I need to look into having an additional partner for my sexual needs and you should look into the same as us being, you know, not monogamous, but in like a monogamous couple, that's a little, little harder to, to navigate, not harder, but it's a little more, uh, abrasive of a, a navigation. It, it could potentially be the end of the relationship. Mm -hmm. So that, that's something that, to keep in, you know, keep in touch. If someone's forced outside of what they consent to, it's assault. So it's better that that relationship end than one person or the other be assaulted mm -hmm. every time. See, that's so I see James says I've never took birth control and the doctors try to force it because I'm a young woman. 
they demean me for saying no. That's so weird. Like, I, I don't, I, I can't understand the hypocrisy sometimes of that. Not to, not to get off of our sex ed talk, but doctors or like the general shithole public want women to be baby factories, but then want to demean them for not getting birth control. It, it, it just it bothers me. I don't know. It's just I, it drives me crazy. Well, they want to control women, so they want to be like, "This is what I think you should do right now, and you should listen to me." And that's probably going to change next week, and you should continue to listen to me then. Yeah, see, that's not. Mm -hmm. uh, Arson says I was on birth control briefly, and it absolutely wrecked my insides, and I absolutely hated it. Now, see, it's. You know, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit last week, but the the changes that your body goes through with hormones, yeah, like the birth mm -hmm. control. So, and then honestly, you have non-hormonal, but your body still has to adapt to certain things. Mm -hmm. um, so, although it's non-hormonal, like an IUD, there's still some shit that's got to go down. Like your, your body's still not going to enjoy it. It's it's essentially a foreign entity being introduced and your body has to learn to either deal with it or reject it. Ah. Ask for consent frequently as comfort levels can change. Um, that's not just like for new dating situations. Mm -mm. A lot of people tend to think that once you're in a relationship, consent is just guaranteed. Um, no. Not even close. Um, I do think the conversation about consent and, and testing like boundaries and, and where you're at, not necessarily testing boundaries is not the word I'm looking for, but, but dipping your toe in the water to see if you're ready for the next level and stuff like that. Um, exploring, exploring, there exploration. you go. Exploration. Exploration. God, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's only a topic of the show. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that becomes more frequent in the first, you know, in that that new relationship phase, that first six to twelve months. I would say not the not the NRE and stuff like that, but just the the getting to that bond of moving things to a different level as you as you learn more about each other. So, multi Amory, mm -hmm. is that who has the? check in what do they call mm -hmm. it radar radar yep that's what they call it so check out the radar episode for your monthly check-ins or bi-weekly or whenever you feel the need to have those kind of conversations with your partner go ahead alice matt asked what about if your consent changed communicate it immediately mm -hmm. even because if it's go ahead sorry alice like, even if you're not in the middle of like a sexual situation, and you're just like, hey, I'm finding myself uncomfortable with this idea. Shoot him a text message or like sit down and talk to him about it just so that that's understood before you run the risk of having that consent violated. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what happened with us in our conversation. You know, we weren't in the middle of having sex. We weren't even about to have sex. We were just sitting there having a conversation. And she just brought up that you know, we need to include condoms in our in our bedroom activities okay <laughs> and that's how, that to me is how it should be if it's not an absolute deal breaker when someone says hey we should introduce a condom or we should take safer measures in this way you know anything that's not detrimental to the relationship should absolutely just be in okay and then you can continue the conversation to to understand why and stuff like that but i feel like it should be agreed upon Almost instantaneous. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to, I've got some things on our list for the rest of the shows for the year. Uh, I think I'm going to switch some up. I'd, I'd love to have one on NRE, a new relationship energy and stuff, especially since uh, like we have Alice and they don't have that NRE doesn't really go away. And that's like a good thing. Is it not there or doesn't go away? Which one is it? Um, six of one, half a dozen of the other. <laughs> it, that I'm always <laughs> excited to be around the people I'm dating. 
and that doesn't stop or taper off or go away. I just change the level I communicate that to their boundaries. But inside of those boundaries, it's uh, puppy energy, I think is what we called it last time. Yep. The entire time. <laughs> and that's fantastic. I think that's wonderful. I think it's it's good to have that perspective because there are some people that just don't feel that until, you know, I, I would correct me if I'm wrong, Ray, but like in a demisexual relationship, you may not feel that until you feel that connection. So once that, it may not start with the NRE and the puppy energy, but it could absolutely develop depending on the, the, the relationship and situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Um, sit down and talk about it after you cool down from sexy time and see what you don't like, tips mm -hmm. and tricks. That is an important, uh, ah, you can't take away from the past, but you can prevent the future. It's a good one. I like that. Um, but I, I do think that's important too. Um, like a scouting report for football, you know, go back and I watch knew film. that's where your brain was going. <laughs> Let's go back and watch film. Like watch you see, what, you reels. see where you touched me there with that, and don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm, no. So obviously, <laughs> you should be making sex tapes so that you can go back and do the the scouting report at the end for educational purposes, right? Only if you are of legal age and everybody gets into it. I might. <laughs> yes to both. Preface all this. That sounds like fun, though. Which which brings in the. Uh, Mr. Moment question. Oh, what oh. if you're in a one party state? What? Oh, and only one person has to know about your recording. All right, Mr. Uh -huh. Mr. Think that's still fucked up when it's sexual, right? Absolutely. Is it? It's fucked up, but I'm talking like legality. If, if it's a one party state, you're still making porn of that person, which is its own separate measurement. Yeah, that's what you I was are thinking. absolutely it's, right. Thank you for this. One porn is badder than yeah. just. Like a one party consent is for recording the audio of a conversation, not videoing someone, not taking pictures of them, not making a sex tape against okay. their will or consent. I just had to have that intrusive thought come out. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I could tell you your intrusive thought was dumb and wrong. Absolutely. That's <laughs> why I let them out. <laughs> yeah. See, so Ray says, I don't feel the NRE until after that emotional connection. So, you know, it's it's different for everybody depending on their their level of romance their level of attraction and, and all those things so so it does bounce from person to person um if you want to listen to the radar uh episode of multi amory it's their episode 147 and it's literally called relationship radar um they have a little thing you can download a little template so might be something neat to look into one day too a really good episode though it really was I, I do i like them a lot they so if i'm not mistaken i don't know if anybody's ever watched multi amory or listen to them um they have um sorry but they have if i'm not mistaken they've all been in some kind of a relationship together like i think dedeker and jace dated jace and emily were together i'm not sure if emily and dedeker were ever a thing but I know that like they had that connection and it's really a healthy, it's a betrayal because it is a public image, you know, it's meant to sound good and stuff like that, but it's, it's a very really healthy very idea about yeah, things. Of, of a good non-monogamous relationship. Um, if you, if you're looking for like a, a pretty solid example. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so consent is important and like we've said it was the fries model uh, freely given reversible informed yes it, i was going to say excruciatingly irritating to remember um <laughs> but enthusiastic, enthusiastic. and Specific. You think as much as I'd say this stuff, I would remember. Mm -hmm. But, but that is a uh, almost the requirements for it. And like I said, we have the also the the new crisp model, which is 
essentially the same thing, but I think it's more of a, I think it's meant to be more of a professional version than anything, I guess, in the context that I read it in. I didn't read the whole article, just what they were talking about. And they talked about like actors and performances and roles and stuff like that. So, and it could have been a whole metaphor. Who knows? Somebody could like look up the article, I guess, but then you would know. But I don't know because I didn't read. I skimmed the headlines. Okay, let's, let's be honest. I get my news from the headlines. Bless your heart. It works. I don't need facts. I just need to know like the idea of what happened. I'll make up the rest. Meanwhile, he will sit and fucking read articles and dig and fucking look up these facts and be like, are these people fucking telling the truth here? Mm-hmm. For like hours and hours and hours. She's got to catch the right, the right. Yeah, it's got to reach out and catch the right, right neuron in the brain for me to go, all right, we're going to dive into this for the next hour and a half, figure <laughs> out if it's real or not. I can honestly say I got caught up in NRE, let it make life-changing decisions when I shouldn't have. It, that that energy, that puppy energy is is really dangerous um, if you don't know how to regulate it. And like Alice, with, with them always being in it, it's something that doesn't have to be regulated because it's a, it's a standard. I mean, it's like, it's just how you are. So, oh, go ahead. It does need to be regulated. Okay. Um, I I have this hopeless romantic streak. So that and puppy energy together, uh, if I don't like sit down and go, all right, is this decision going to hurt me long term or is it going to affect my goals? Then I'll make impulsive decisions that are a lot bigger than they should be. So that's something I actually put a lot of work into regulating in terms of the big decisions. Okay. Okay. That's, that's fair. That's my, my misjudgment there. It's just, it's a lot of work to regulate that all the time. So it's probably a lot harder than um, than just your standard, like, oh, this is a cool new relationship. I think I'm going to be with this person forever, and I'm going to make all my decisions based on that, and then shit happens, and then it's not. Um, yeah. So I could see that. I could see that being a, a tough battle to go through pretty regularly. Um, I would imagine near daily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> At least regular enough for it to be something you have to think about. I'm I'm fortunate that Lav, Clara, and I like have a, like a ten year plan in place. Okay. So like I can go, is this gonna fuck with that? And I've got a a good yardstick for what's a good decision to make impulsively and not. That's absolutely wonderful. I like that. I'm not that good at planning though, so that's why I have. This one, she she figures out. See, hey, you can see me on her camera. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we have this one. Um, I, I think that is important to have that that give and take and that balance of a relationship because I, I am the impulsive and crazy one. I get us into fun things, but you know, I very rarely do I consider anything beyond the next few hours. <laughs> yep, that this is so very true. Sometimes you have to be reminded. And- Unless it's being petty. Being petty, I can plan out for months. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if we're being honest, I can plan out things to do to people for months. Um, but but I, I think that's essential, too, is that, that having, and that's what I like about non-monogamy is you're able to almost, you know, it, it's a builder bear You get to add all the exact things you want to it, and what's going to work best for you as long as it works best for everybody else. I think it's why I fell so in love with with polyamory and non-monogamy is because I can depend on myself, but I can also have others that want to help me be a better person overall. So absolutely. It can, it can leave you devastated. It can leave others devastated. Um, NRE is dangerous. Post nut clarity is like the closest thing I could say to coming out of that honeymoon phase where everything sounded like a great idea and then it just then it just went to shit. Yeah. We could probably do a whole episode on post nut clarity. <laughs> All right. See I'm getting ideas. Episodes for this. are planned. Well we can you plan them, they're staying. 
Well, that's where I am the chaotic the new one. Ideas I will change some shit around. <laughs> Your new episode ideas can go at the end of the line. When they can have their turn when everything else is done. That's right. But they're new. And I'm excited for them. And I want to put them right in the middle of everything. See? There Your it is. There's the puppy energy right there. One neuron that you said fired that one week It'll die. made a whole <laughs> schedule of munches for us. And we should stick to it. Absolutely. Because we've I told do. people if they're interested in the topics to come on and join us. Well, when they show up and it's not that topic, surprise, motherfuckers, that's just who we are. No. <laughs> that's who I am. <laughs> not yes. who we are, who I am. Oh, if hey. I showed up onto the munch to find out that you changed the topic last minute, I would sign off immediately. I know you would. <laughs> so if we ever need an Alice free night, we just change the subject last minute. Jerk. <laughs> right? I didn't say we needed one. I said if we ever needed one. <laughs> or you could communicate and be like, hey, Alice, take a night off. Yeah, you know, that does, you know that, that's absolutely the better way. You know, that, that does sound pretty good, doesn't it? But if we need a princess night away, we'll talk about having babies and cream pie fetishes. Ew, gross. See? Like, it's just like. No, you guys need commentary. <laughs> y'all are going to hit. Y'all, it'll be a drinking game of me saying, ew, gross, every 10 seconds. And I'm so sorry. I don't need a kink shame, but. <laughs> It's involuntary. I'm proud of all of all of you that like it. I won't say it's not fun to watch, but not near me, like in real life. You Only know. like on Disney movies. I meant on, on movies. Disney. <laughs> Jen, what kind of Disney are you watching? It's the only Disney I ever got to see. <laughs> Snow White and the Seven Dwarves were a whole lot more pirated. fun here, I don't know, huh? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. All right, so I had to mute that so I didn't hack and cough into the getting over a cold and it sucks. Like it's lingering now. It only hit hard for like a day and now I've got the congestion for like the next six months and I can't stop coughing for at least the next two. Hmm. Has nothing to do with how much I smoke though. Uh, where were we? Oh, um, so we'll get the mm -hmm. the exploration aspect. We'll probably cover some of this too, but communicate, it's give feedback, much. just like uh, <laughs> Becca said. What Disney do you have? I want it. <laughs> right. Oh man, um, uh, it's like who was it earlier? Just give me just a second. Was it Dream that was talking about earlier? Yeah, what feels good, reviews, you know, watch film. Um, but being able to, you should be able to have that open line of communication with your partner to be able to do so. Um, will your partner judge you for some things you say and want to do? Absolutely. It's human nature, unfortunately. May not be like, oh, God, you're the sickest person ever. But if they are, then you probably don't want to be in that relationship. But they may go, um, I'm not sure I want to do that. And that's just them communicating their boundaries. So mm -hmm. once again, it becomes how much respect do you have for each other? So I highly recommend doing your homework with each other, with exploring, before doing crazy acts of anything. It really doesn't hurt to learn about it first. If there's something that you're both interested in, it can be even like a really cute date to just like make a little dinner and sit down together and research the thing together. Mm -hmm. Go to the bookstore, pick up. I don't have any bookstores that sell that kind of material around here. So we have some books with like relationship sections and sometimes you can find some some fun books yeah. in there. We have uh, Barnes and Noble and Books a Million around us. That's our like actual physical ones. Now we have like consignment shops and little. We have a small bookstore. Um, Becca, absolutely, the adult stores around here. Some of them do have books. Not mm -hmm. a lot of them have great selections because they bought them in 1987, and nobody likes to read. 
that goes in there sometimes. And we still have the almighty internet. Absolutely. The internet's Interest. another thing as well. Um, and that could be a cute idea to add to send each other articles to check out. Um, it, it keeps that line of communication. Hey, what do you think about this? Alive and I will like our reddits and our Twitters are full of porn and we'll just send that to each other. A lot of the time it'll be something like, Ooh, this looks fun. Or just like the, the hot face emoji. Uh, and that's something else. I mean, that's, it's important because to me, it puts the ball in the other person's court a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's I've expressed that I find this attractive or I'd like to try this. If you don't open the link, then it's a bad idea. I mean, you know, maybe I don't know, you guys. Maybe one would call this a more nuanced way of communication. Mm -hmm. Texting. But no, communicating with each other through videos. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Alice here in a second, we're gonna take. I'm gonna take a little bathroom break and stuff like that. There's a video I'm gonna pull up before we get on the consent. Um, and now's actually a good time to do so. Uh, it's it's sign language. It's like five minutes long. Um, oh. It's like He's sign so language cool. it's based great, on you know. like consensual things. It's like you know, yes, maybe. Sex. I feel the same. Uh, they have like two different sign languages for fucking. Um, thank you. Like, there's a whole bunch of we kind of glanced over while we were looking it up. And I remember that one. Jen wanted us to put this up. It gives everybody something visual and cool to watch. It's and awesome I'll have movie. the link later for anybody that wants to really watch it. I just have Probably to freaking stuff. not. Let's be honest here, mister. <laughs> How many times have we promised a link? You guys, you know what? I'm not going to let this happen anymore. <laughs> He's right. not going to promise any links because they probably you know won't what? get dropped. I want a notepad. Might happen I now because I gave him hell about it. So. I need a munch notepad. You do. I mean, I have a computer in front of me, but it distracts right? me. Because then I go out do other things. If I have something to write, I just write it. And then put the pen down. So that's a that's coming next week. Um, but anytime you're feeling like pain, awkward, pleasure, like in the moment, you can still express that. You don't have to wait until you're done having sex and, and done doing whatever activity you're doing. Um, because... Damn, I read stuff and I got sidetracked. But no, you don't have to wait until it's over to say, okay, that one thing you did really hurt. And I don't want you to do that. And I feel like kind of like uh, violated in some way. Go ahead. If you're with someone and like you're having sex with them, they should respect you enough that you feel comfortable talking about it. Like, I know a lot of people are shitty about interrupting sex because like, oh, babe, I was so close, me, And like, like we can't start again. Yeah. Have that moment of communication, adjust as needed, and then get back into it with a more enthusiastic partner than you had five minutes ago. Because mm -hmm. then it's probably going to be better the next time. Like mm -hmm. if, once you've made the proper adjustments. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Right, says you can inform of a change in any status in status at any point. So this is actually a good time to bring up um, a safe word. It, it is a thing That's that a lot of people carry in their back pocket of their brain and keep there, or even hand signals if you um, have a partner who is capable of paying attention to those things. You have to know, you know, you're partner and yourself of course so I read a good little tip earlier so like and it was in a vanilla type of relationship um, where they didn't do anything extreme but sometimes they may not want to say like ow that hurts I don't like that's uncomfortable they just say a random word like that doesn't fit the context of what they're doing and it just causes that pause for a second and it's mm -hmm. like, what did you say? You know, like, or something super, super silly. You, know, you can't come if you're laughing. So maybe, I don't know. I've never tried that. I had a, a partner earlier this year where if they were uncomfortable, they'd just start quoting vines. 
oh, yeah, that would do it. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> That's the most interesting orgasm ever. It's usually, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> Not Jerome didn't get invited to the tea party. Like, like, that, you know, like. <laughs> um, but communication can leave you feeling vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, I think that's what people struggle with the most. Um, is that vulnerable feeling of I'm expressing myself to someone in a way that means I am by the average person's thought of I am at the mercy of what this person is going to think of me. Yeah, so that's 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 the only part I think people have to overcome the most is knowing that I'm about to express something that you know it may not be bad it may be something my partner may find strange you know like a, you may have like a, a water sports fetish and you're like I'd like for you to do that and it's like you got to put that out there and you got to deal with the judgment of it you know, and hopefully you can communicate through it and if it's not a must have and roll on you know and maybe revisit it in the future but if it is something that is a must have then once again you reevaluate the relationship mm -hmm. i'm with becca fuck what other people think but it's also important to take into consideration what people you care about may think sometimes specifically partners family not so much whatever Fuck them, they'll either get on board or they'll just be pissed off. <laughs> yeah, so that's another good one. Um, I think we need to revisit that topic. That's something else I need to add on. So we've got NRE, uh, radar, and and now like um, safe words and stuff. Will be another good conversation to have. I, we keep it up. I'm going to have like next year scheduled too. It's going to be great. <laughs> Um, but there are tons of ways, you know, and anybody watching this later, we will revisit topics many, many different times and we will have, we will even have different opinions of it at, you know, than we had before. It, it's all about growth and understanding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, what I may consider, you know, a hard truth for me right now in a year, I may look at and go, well, that's absolutely not what I think because we are allowed to, to change who we are and what we think, mm -hmm. and, and hopefully always for the better. Yeah. I think the more you know, the more you grow. You should always be a grower. And Not a shower. a shower. That's just cocky. <laughs> so if anybody wants to grab a quick break, get a snack or whatever, Go for it. I'm going to go pee. Got me something to drink. And I'm going to throw this video up real quick and we'll come back and, and have a quick conversation about consent. Do, 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 do. Oh, that was not as cool as I thought it would be. I was hoping I already had it ready to play. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's in the middle of it. Oh, okay. That's not, looks good. Okay.
so that disconnection was us. Uh, my internet's stupid because of uh, the weather and some storms and stuff right now. Um, but yeah, just a brief minute or two left there. So, okay. Okay, and we are back from that. Oh, I don't know if they want to be muted or not, so we mute them real quick. Go You're good. All right, okay, just wanted to make sure. Um, so, yeah, that looked like a little interesting video, and a lot of the words linked into, you know, honestly, a lot of it was like sexuality and consent, which was super important. Just one more way to communicate. But speaking of consent, we are <clears throat> to that. I want to. I want to derail things for just a second. Go for it. Um, so I I mentioned last week privately to y'all that I had started pumping, and I started having cravings. And one of the cravings I was having was chocolate, mm. which I'm gravely allergic to. If you were. Oh yeah. Um, or I should say I was. Because I finally caved and got some and had zero reaction. That's fucking awesome. And Bananas. I've, I've so, had s'mores. I've had candy bars. I've had like granola bars with chocolate chips. I've had cookies. I've had like I kind of splurged a little bit. And also, Mister, I might be joining you a little bit. Motherfucking oh. butt round. <laughs> mm. Hell yeah, that's great. I'm so happy for you. That's like. The best. You ever need to see evidence that you're changing even to, to more of a different person? Mm -hmm. You can now have chocolate. <laughs> I'm so stoked about it. We're going to test out the other lesser allergies at some point, too. That'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And see what else has changed and or stuck around. That, that really is nice, though. I'm glad you can enjoy stuff like that again. Me, too. I have missed having fudge rounds. Yeah, I don't think I could live without fudge rounds in my life. <laughs> like, I would absolutely keep an EpiPen on me just so I could have snack nights every now and then. <laughs> All right, so I am finishing my little snack here. It's not a snack, it's actually my second dinner. <laughs> Had a smothered burrito from Taco Bell. And now I'm having Japanese food. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I haven't had, like, I eat Japanese a lot. And my spring rolls are no longer, like, springy and crunchy because they've been in, like, a little bag. So they're just, like, mushy. Oh. So those are delicious, too. Oh, I'll eat the shit out of them. Mm. So, consent. I think we've covered it, like, throughout this whole thing anyway. But we talked about fries. Talk about Chris. So one of the notes here, uh, I don't know why I wrote it this way, but ensure you both fully understand anatomy. Um, and I can't make that connection in my head to consent. Because you need to know how it's going to impact, like whatever activity you're doing is going to impact your body to be able to informally consent to it. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's probably where I was headed. If not, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But you are correct. I mean, you know, it goes into, you know, the, so more specifically, someone that's trans may still have their uh, manufacturer's equipment. (laughs) So if you're openly and willingly dating someone, and okay to know that they are a trans trans femme or trans mask or trans man, trans woman. That's an important <laughs> conversation to have. It's like, yes, I know you're a trans. Um, that then, you know, well, I'm trans, but I haven't gone through a whole transition. This is what's still left. Go ahead, Alice. You can cover this a hell of a lot better than I can. I, I just want to jump in real quick and say that you you don't say full transition. Because like there are trans people who keep their original, their manufacturer's equipment, <laughs> right? Um, for for some people that is the goal, but to say you haven't gone through a full transition because you haven't had bottom surgery uh, is something that's called a uh, trans medicalism, oh, okay. which is really gross when it's done on purpose and is used to kind of other the trans people who don't want to go through that surgery for whatever reason. Okay, cool, cool, okay. Uh, see, I didn't, once again, something else I just didn't know. Um, so that's interesting. So just just trans, it doesn't matter what part of the, how far they're willing to go. Don't matter the journey. Exactly. It matters what they say. Yeah. Gotcha, okay. So, so if you're dating someone that still has their manufacturer's equipment, um, I hope that's a... Uh, I feel like that should be a conversation. Um, they don't necessarily owe you that conversation, but at the same time, I feel like it's it's a mutual respect thing. Go ahead. At at the point that sex is being discussed, like if you're like just dating, just getting to know each other, you're not entitled to that conversation at any point. But at the point where you might have to interact with whatever equipment they have, that's when that conversation should happen. Absolutely. Um, to, and if to you're, date, I mean, not, if you're, go ahead, sorry. Uh, if you're dating someone who's like openly trans or someone who's like in the closet but lets you know they're trans, you need to let them know whether or not their original equipment is okay. Absolutely. Um, so, so your view and the, and the way you're making me see that and I understand it is um, the same way I view like STIs, like at least like herpes something that's a little more long term um it's not really anybody's business until it needs to be their business exactly because because ultimately what that conversation is is talking about someone else's genitals Mm -hmm. and you there's a context that's appropriate for that like if you're going to be touching them soon or seeing them soon right you should know that ahead of time but outside of that context, like I, it would be weird, just as weird to go up to a, a cis man or a cis woman and be like, hey, uh, what's in your pants? You know? Oh, yeah. I have to sidebar something I had in my head one day about uh, uh, being an absolute intrusive asshole to the the right-wing Christian nationalist type of people. Now, I've said it before. No, it was back, exactly. Matter of fact, it was back when I first kind of like in the first few episodes of meeting you. Know, yeah, uh, I was just going to stuff know, it in your mouth. Treating them like they're trying to treat trans people, but then that just creates a vicious cycle of being an asshole to them and telling them that I need to see their genitals mm-hmm. makes it okay for them to say it to, to anybody else. Yeah, so what you do instead is you make damn sure they know they're the asshole and that that's not welcome in your spaces. And if enough spaces are doing that, they either have to change their behavior to be able to socialize or they ostracize themselves. Right. See, I'm developing as a person. Call that character growth. We don't want to call it big words, important words. We want to make it sound too good. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um ah uh, this is a good one don't assume consent is still given based on prior hookups 
more responses. What you two drunk texted each other in the middle of the night last night may not fly when we get together for lunch later. It's all about testing the water. And I'm sorry that your kiddo gets that. Honestly, that's that's just shitty people being shitty. What? Ray's coming there. My kiddo gets that a lot from family until you have permanent surgery. You're still a girl. Yeah, that is shitty. And Ray, that lightning may be epic, so I need to. The have lightning a video is of it. epic here as well. Yeah, it's like, been some cool ass lightning. Holy storms electricity. <laughs> Um, but I think that's important. Um, don't assume you have consent based on a past. You know, that's. I feel like that's like a. It's not a no brainer, though. No, no, I'm saying like I feel like that's like a, a very important one. A lot of people, or a lot of. Yeah, a lot of people um, just assume after they're in a relationship that all these things are okay at any given time you should be at my beck and call but that's not how it goes unless you're in a relationship that's is negotiated in that style exactly that can be fun too no okay so Ray, and, and i agree you know as we say it's all context we stay you know, short comments so i can keep up <laughs> if you just leave it scrolled right there it'll come up okay thank god but uh in some scenarios, I mean, the mm -hmm. the attraction and the chemistry and the relationship is still unspoken and known. Um, it just depends on your relationship. I don't know if you're talking about what I'm talking about then, now that I see the next comment. <laughs> I say we don't ban any books. Okay. That's a, that's a fair statement, I think. I just think that there should be a proper library for each style of books. If it's a children's library, keep children's books there, not right. how to build a bomb. That's what I was thinking about, like <laughs> band, band, book bands. Cate having you have, your religious having appropriate categories. Which, unfortunately, as much as it will upset people, means there will be books about sex education mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. children's library. There would be all kinds of... Because, fun fact, I don't remember the name of the book now. I'm sure Alice may remember or be able to find it quickly. But there was a girl that was able to... Uh, sorry, trigger warning about uh, molestation. But she was able to identify and tell her family that she was being molested by someone in her family. Because of that book. I want to say she was like nine, maybe. Where's my other? I don't know. Is it, is it safe to, to say, though? I mean... It's a conversation that should be had. I mean, if, if you used to hook up with somebody and you text them, I'm sure it's not going to be, you know, I'm on my way to have sex. You know, it's it's going to be a conversation. You're going to talk. I mean, there's going to be some context to it, usually. Maybe. Yeah, don't be don't that know. douchebag. Don't. <laughs> Again, unless it's something that's already negotiated. Right. Like, if they've sent you a message that says, I don't care how long it's been, you can send me you up and show up, then cool. Oh, yeah. Consent. Those are always nice. What do we call those? Back pockets? The, the, what do you call uh, <laughs> No, a particular yeah. person it's, it's in somebody, your life. Somebody in your back pocket. That you have. A backup plan. <laughs> Not a backup plan, but back pocket, yeah. Yeah. Um, funny enough, that's... Uh, a deal that or a, a unwritten line of communication I had with somebody um, mm -hmm. from my past, and that's how we ended up uh, reconnecting and connecting for the first time in real life. Was 
I got a text in the middle of the night that says, I'm horny, help. And like, I haven't spoken to that person in like, <laughs> at that time, it was like six months. And just randomly got a, I'm horny, help text. So I was like, yep, okay, how you doing? <laughs> oh. So, is Dream still here? This is pretty awesome. Let me just a second. I'm over here trying to. I'm trying to find that book. Sorry, I just got some messages that make me very glad you can't see what's on my second screen. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, that's the good stuff there. Do you have any any more identifying information about this story that you're trying to find? No, that's what's killing me. Um, fuck. So if it helps, I know the book was a very, it was controversial for one because it was depicting like it showed people in like, that had disabilities weren't able to have sex and how women had like it was it was illustrations but it was showing how these things happen i'm gonna get myself put on a fucking list well, the Did they, I can't hear either. There we go. Okay. Oh no, things broke. My oh, internet oh. pissing me off. Maybe it's scared of the thunder. It must be. Oh man, it's gonna bug me. Is that it? I'm not sure. It's going to bug me. I'll eventually. Uh, can you write that down for me? Right, right now. It's like sex ed book helps girl. And I don't know what it's talking about. Oh my gosh. Um, that's so much information right there. But I remember that being a key part of it, though, because people were up. Yeah, did you find it? Uh, the book is called It's Perfectly Normal. I knew it. I, I have it pulled up she, right now. It was a 10 year old girl in Delaware picked it up. And while they were at the library with their mother, and when the two of them got home, she started reading it. She showed her mom the, the chapter on sexual abuse and what this is me. Yep, that's it. And that's that's why that stuff's important, though. Yeah. Uh, is it a, probably a, a rare moment that that happened? Absolutely. But... But if, more, if this knowledge was more readily available to kids, we would have it happen much more often when it needs to. Uh-huh. <clears throat> See, that's, that's going to my book collection. I am ordering that soon. For sure. Yeah, I can get a paperback version for $5. Oh, yeah, I'm getting that. Um, sorry for that sidetrack, guys. Yeah, pals. <laughs> Non-binary pals. <laughs> Uh, we tend to do that. If this is your first munch, uh, welcome. As always, we do weird and random stuff sometimes. Um, I think that's a really important book to have, and that is going on this. It's called It's Perfectly Normal. This is the book. Do we write that down? It's Perfectly Normal book, since you are my secretary tonight. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. I will check those videos out uh, just a little bit, Ray. Um, as we said before, communication explicitly agree on use of contraception, like condoms. Um, we touched on it last week about, you know, if someone is, if you told someone you, they need a condom and then they remove that condom, 
that's assault. That's that's absolutely sexual assault. That, that's where we get into the shitty justice system, though. Like the likelihood of being that being pursued is so low, mm. and, it, and it's such it's bullshit. Still doesn't. It? It's still not fucking right. No, Don't fucking do that shit. No, it's you not okay be a decent at all. Human. There. If anybody ever does that to you, anybody watching this, let me know. <laughs> yeah. I may be considered a liberal down here in the South, but I still got Southern connections, all right? <laughs> um, Jesus, I just got off track again. I don't know about Southern connections, but I've got a, a wonderful recipe for a cocktail I can share with people who do that. There you go, see? Um, if you were going to be sexually active with someone, regardless of the age you are, you should understand that pregnancies are a possibility. STIs are a possibility. Even, and what a lot of people don't understand is even if you're, even if you're a virgin and you've never had sex, you could still possibly have an STI. Um, that's because of genetics. You can be, these things can be passed on down through, through birth and all that stuff, um, which is wild. Like, you'd be born with it and fucking never have a fucking choice anyway. That's not really good. Um, so, you know that, though, wouldn't you know that? maybe. You would okay. think so, but you know, anyway. maybe. Right? Okay. Um, but that's why it's important to make sure you're tested and stuff like that. Oh, and side note, as far as that book goes, I love it because the reading age is 10 years and up. So that's what tells me it's an okay book to, you know, it's not explicit. It's an actual educational book. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm not sure how long it'll take me to get that, but I will probably sit there and read it live just to share with push you some all. buttons. Or, yeah, share, share with and you educate. All. That's what I said. I don't know what came out, but that's what I said. <laughs> yeah see and that's something also important too you know um people don't sometimes they don't know it's not okay to say no or it's okay to say no sorry I misworded that some people don't know that it's okay to say no um because it may be an authority figure a teacher a boss a police officer um um, something something like, less insidious even they could have just been like not educated before that moment about sex and consent so they just have someone that they're just not particularly interested in who they don't know that they can say no to you know i mean it's and then again it's even a little more nuanced than that of not having that education well if this person knows about sex then they must know more than i do so I can probably trust what they've got to say. Um, that's that's the thought process that some people can go down. And absolutely, the legal system can be, we'll say, usually is very victim blaming, if we're going to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so make it clear that the sperm and egg thing has to happen for pregnancy to happen. Um, like that's like proven science, so you know that whole virgin oh, light rays from and lesbian sex. Oh, <laughs> can't get pregnant if you scissor. <laughs> Sorry, if I interrupted. Oh, no, absolutely, much better thought. <laughs> um, but know those conversations to have. Um, and and parents, if your child comes to you about somebody potentially doing something inappropriate with them, listen to what they've got to say. It like genuinely, just listen to what they've got to say. That's like the whole thing. There's nothing else to say. You just listen to what they've got to say, and then you help them work through it, and you help figure out what the next solution is.
What am I doing here? Uh, ah, set boundaries and respect them if a partner declines. If somebody says they don't want to, you say, okay. You don't coerce. You can talk about why with the understanding that you're not trying to change their mind. Right. Right. If they say no, that no doesn't change because they tell you why they're not comfortable with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't don't be a whiny ass about it either if you get turned out. No, why not? <laughs> you blue balls. You blue balls. Blue balls don't okay, so let me let me let me say a double edged thing here. Blue balls do exist, but they don't exist at the same time. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I think I think I know what you're trying to say. Blue balls exist, but they're not the other person's problem. That, but the likelihood of legitimate condition of have the blue balls condition is very unlikely. How likely is it? Look it up. Well, let's see. But I remember looking this up one day. And like, so there's an actual, it can actually happen. Uh, we're not, okay, we got to clarify sex education, not, not a uh, lottery. <laughs> so a blue ball is randomly six times out of 16, roughly, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Alice. So, so to approach this from a, a little bit more of an informed position, um, blue balls is a slang term for what's called um, epididymal hypertension. Uh, it's when you have too much blood in that area because you're, the way hormones around, let's say, testosterone-fueled sex works is that a lot of that blood can go down easily, but there are systems in place to keep it from leaving easily until that orgasm happens. And then things relax and your blood goes back to where it's supposed to be. And um, that's essentially why you have to call a doctor if you have an erection after four hours from taking by Yes. Because if it's staying around that long, it can start clotting in places you don't want it to clot. Um, but with the epididymal hypertension, it's, it's literally just you're horny enough that there's too much blood down there. And your body is uncomfortable because there's too much blood down there. Like and that's what do you the thing to do to relieve that. You go, oh, you need the you need to stop. Cool, I'm gonna go take care of myself real quick. You walk in the bathroom, give yourself some attention, come back out, and then jump on aftercare. Like at least offer. Do you want to watch? <laughs> if if you have on... that dynamic, sure. I was gonna say, depending on why you stopped. <laughs> Yeah. You know, if they were just getting sore or not feeling good or just wasn't doing it for them, if you want to watch or not, I'll handle this somewhere else. Can we put porn on the big screen, like something, you know, like just do it all together. Uh. Something like, like if there's not a, like a confrontational reason to stop, like just say one person's physically not feeling up to it, but they want to keep that going. Another thing you could do is actually just watch porn on a cell phone and like snug up to each other while you're watching and then has just have this real intimate moment where you're watching this small screen snugged up to each other and giving yourselves attention no very nice i should have absolutely we probably should have covered this under anatomy but if you do have like if you have genuine pain in your testicles um it's probably like i said unlikely that it's blue balls um it could be anywhere, anything from kidney stones. What you got, Alice? The most common cause is going to be what's called an epididymal head cyst. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've mentioned that I've I've had I have a lump for a while that's not like malignant in any way. That's right. what that is, and it hurts basically every day. Oh. Like it's, um, that's the most common one for for people who have. A sufficiently male level of testosterone that'll happen and then go away in six to ten weeks uh. feel but, uh, better kisses don't work unfortunately no 
Oh, oh, Trust wild. me, laugh has tried plenty. <laughs> <laughs> um, so kidney stones can cause a referred pain. If the stone is lodged in the right place, it can make it oh. feel like it's in your testicles. Mm -hmm. um, that sucks. Testicular right. torsion um, is a very serious condition. Um, yeah, and the uh, if I'm not mistaken, if anybody knows better than I do, but I believe it requires surgery to fix. You just can't go in and they go, oh shit, let's uh, loosen up the light bulb a little Let's bit. have diabetes. You know, lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. It, if it's minor enough that they can undo it like that, it's not oh. just a huge question. I didn't have any. If it if it's actually testicular torsion, it it takes surgery to fix, and then it's not going to be a good time for anybody. It is not a circus act, as much as it sounds like one. <laughs> This one says injury. I mean, injury, you would know if you got hurt. I would hope you would know if you got hit in the balls. <laughs> so you said epididymis? Epididymal head cyst? Ep yeah. So there's also one that just happens. Uh, it's a it's an itis. So like it's just inflamed. Like Epididymitis? That actual, yeah, that, that actual tube. That, that an, an unnecessarily fun word to say. Yeah, see, uh -huh. that's why I said it's epididymitis. <laughs> epididymitis. Epididymitis. Varicocele, varicocele, v a r i c o c e l e. Um, that is occurs when the veins in the testicles become enlarged. Like varicose veins in your legs, but inside your testicles. Fun fact, it usually happens on the Ooh. left side. Mm -hmm. that's, that's wild. So those are actual reasons your testicles should like can actually hurt really, really bad. Um, not getting to come is just going to be a little uncomfortable, and you should go ahead and let yourself. Go ahead, Alice. Um. Having having blue balls or the. Uh, the epididymal hypertension, like that is a valid reason, right? That That is a legitimate reason for things to hurt. It's not a justification to pressure anyone else into anything else, but it, it is valid. And I, okay. I don't... Correct, correct. I just, I, I misspoke there. So yeah, yeah. It, it will hurt. Absolutely. But that sounds like it's something for you to try to fix on your own. Mm -hmm. Or if your partner is willing to still give you a hand however they can or, or however they would desire to. Um, and if it doesn't help and you can't get it to go away, absolutely go seek medical attention. A hand, a set of boobies, um, an armpit, a leg a pit, the knee for, back behind there. For, that for, actually is. When you're dealing with that, the blue balls, like if that feeling doesn't go away in a couple hours, go see a doctor. Absolutely. Go talk to a doctor and like, don't wait the four hours because this isn't Viagra. And if you wait it out, it should only take 10, 15 minutes for it to go away. Yeah, so, so after after probably like 30, 30 minutes or so, you should be looking into finding out why you haven't subsided yet. Yeah. You guys covered everything yet? Oh no, we got we got a few minutes for exploration. Exploration is kind of a quick run through the. I mean, it's just explore. Have We've fun. kind of talked about it a lot, yeah. anyways, too. Um, so don't but, pressure your partner or continue without clear verbal consent about trying something new or doing anything really. You know. and the, sorry. so consent can be roll over. Because then, if you roll over, you understand that it's getting ready to go somewhere else. Something else. In, in in a relationship where that context has been communicated, That's yes. Right. If you go up to someone your first time without talking about <laughs> that, you just go roll over. Uh, you're at best going to get some strange looks. 
<laughs> I'm thinking about like me being approached in public by somebody and somebody tells me to roll over. Roll I'd over. like get on the ground and roll over and be like, <laughs> ta da! What are we in a fucking dog park? Like, get out of here. <laughs> um, and the last one, and truly a very important one, speaking to my typically my high, my junior seniors in high school as well as my college folks um consent avoid seeking consent when judgment is impaired by a substance which to, to put more simply if you're going to be doing substances talk about sex beforehand mm -hmm. and like if you're gonna have a high sex or drunk sex then talk so about it Right. And if you don't talk about it ahead of time, don't do it. And of course, you'll have situations in your life where you you hook up with somebody from a bar and you're drunk, or you hook up at a party. It should still be clear enough that you know, if, you're, if you're falling okay. down getting to the bedroom because you're that drunk, no. <laughs> The level of inebriation yeah. now having just like a couple drinks at a bar together because you know social drinks it that's acceptable a lot of people now i can't social drink because i will be needing help to the bedroom because <laughs> you're 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 two, two lighting, shots in you're but going. a lot of people have a nightcap and mm -hmm. That doesn't make them unable to be consenting adults. Right. And that's something that I hear too much on a lot of these communities, which you know, the reason we have the King Slayer brand is you should never drink and do anything. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> don't drink because you don't want to drink. And play with however you most comfortable and communicated with. I think I just spoke against like somebody I highly regard too. I think you just shouldn't drink and drive. Yeah, no. That's that's a no no too. That so that's something neat that I learned about my own boundaries from a previous relationship recently. That's no longer tolerated. It happened twice, and the third time was going to be absolutely gone. But now that that has happened, it's given me an experience. So in the future, that's a hard line. Like that's it's a, it's a one and done thing now. No event implies consent. I like that. That should be a slogan. Prom date doesn't mean consent. Absolutely. But I'm always, I'm still an advocate for spontaneous like things too, though. Yeah, I mean, in an ideal world, you're going to talk about things and stuff like that. But spontaneous things will still happen at some point in your life. So, so, all, so you just brought up something really important in their last comment. The designated um, driver should not be sexing drunk people. Yes. You you can run into some, some weird consent areas if everyone's on an equal level of inebriation or like if you, everyone's an equal level of high, uh, if you're stone cold sober and haven't like talked to this person and gotten consent to have sex with them while they're drunk and you're not, don't that's assault. Yeah. Don't be that weird. Yeah. Fucking creep. That is not a cool DD. Buying your dinner is not consent. No, it is not. And buying dinner doesn't entitle you to shit either. It entitles, it entitles you, to, you to a bill. Yeah, that's <laughs> the only thing you're entitled to is a bill, and you better tip well. <laughs> oh, it's it's crazy to think that. There are an uncomfortable amount of people that think like that. I'm not going to say 
majority, I'm not going to say any certain type of group, but there are a lot of people. The number's more than zero, so it's more than it should be of people that think that way. Well, I bought you a drink. That means you owe me your number. <laughs> Good. Uh, I'm, I'm not raising my hand to talk. Oh, okay. Exploration? Yep. So, Alice, what do, you, what do you got for exploration, like, just in general? Um, really only three rules. If it's something new, discuss it ahead of time. Get consent. If you don't have consent with that person, find someone you do. And don't shut things down because you're worried what other people think. Like, a lot of trans people start exploring gender in, like, uh, specifically trans femmes, like into the forced femme resuscitation stuff, just to tip like toe into the water, right? So don't don't shut things down because it might be weird or uncomfortable, but do get consent before you do things. What about you? Any any quick tidbits for exploration? Uh Alice wrapped it up very well, neat and pretty in a bow. But I'm going to add some glitter of <laughs> it's okay to try things and not like them. It's okay to talk about trying new things. It's okay to watch porn. It's okay to do research. It's actually really hot, like we talked about earlier, to do it together. Um, but it boils down to you communicating what you like and you don't like, and what you maybe like. Like my bubble needs stretched out. I can't take anything back there. Well, it could happen. You, I, mean. I mean, no, ow, no. <laughs> there's equipment that I could use to do that in a less hurdy way. Yeah. Well, I half ass something twice when you whole ass at once. <laughs> absolutely becca ray three all of you like absolutely always Spot tip on. your servers always tip your servers don't use the babysitter role to justify shitty things they don't owe you anything for volunteering my my philosophy when it comes to exploration once to try, twice to know. Now, given there's some nuance to that, you know, if you absolutely hate something, you don't have to try it twice to know you don't like it. Mm. But if you try something and you're like, eh, kind of liked it, maybe didn't, not sure, give it another shot. You know, at the end of the day, go best two out of three. And you don't necessarily have to try things you don't want to try. No. At any point. Nope. Absolutely. Mm -mm. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yuck anybody's yum. Even though I'm sitting over here gagging over my yucks. You know what, though? I feel like that phrase in, in your aspect, the way you're doing it, you, know, you think it's fucking gross. That's fine. That's your opinion. You're not forcing anyone else. You're not telling I, anyone else that they are shitty people or gross because they do it. You just think the whole act of it is like gross. Therefore, you're not judging them. Me. You're judging the act. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> what do you mean? But that's got uh, that's got hate the sin, love the sinner energy. What the fuck does that mean? That that's the same like. Oh, I, I don't, like, from from shitty Christians, like, I don't hate you. I hate the sinful lifestyle you're living. Or, like, the, the, the Christians who, like, hate on trans people or gay people in general. Because they're like, oh, I, I love everyone because Jesus said to, but I hate the life you're living. I don't hate you. I just hate everything about you. See, I don't, so I'm not diving, to me, I'm not diving that deep in. To me, it's like I, I look at how I look at vegans. I'm so, like, that's fucking weird. I couldn't do that. 
but if it makes you happy, go for it. I will talk about the two things I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> Licking butthole and having semen anywhere near me. Okay. Okay. Those are my two yucks. But I personally am grateful that the world is still existing because some people like to serve and receive cream pies. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome, but I don't want it done to me personally. And so that's not, that's not what Mr. was saying. That's just setting like a personal boundary. That's, that's not like judging the act. And he still licks my butthole and I just, pop them every time i'm like get, no i'm never gonna lick yours don't lick mine i'm not doing it for i can't say that <sighs> so 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 in my aspect of it is, is, is my own personal opinion sorry so uh, dream says you can absolutely yuck somebody jump man i wish dream was up here ah so in the comments i'll give you time to respond dream why do you think it's okay to yuck somebody jump And how can you do so respectfully? Oh, you're not going to do so respectfully. Don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So, like, like to me, it's 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 essentially, like I said, the, the vegan thing. You know, I could never. Can I talk about buttholing some more? We'll sure. Give you a whole conversation. I just Go learned about it. these barriers that we have. Uh -huh. The dental dams. Mm -hmm. Those are interesting. Little. That'd be like maybe a birthday present. For me? Yeah. My birthday's coming up. Do they <laughs> make bigger? Do they make bigger? Oh shit! Do bigger? they make bigger dental dams that'll like? They do, and they make one specifically for that activity. Just, just okay. so we're clear, though, the butthole's only like this. That? Like, you don't. Um, you... I don't know that I believe that, Mister, with how caked up you are. But let's not talk about your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's, it's roughly the size of anywhere from a dime to a 50 cent piece. There you go. So you still don't need like a, a napkin sized dental dam. I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> I'm not ready to explore like That's that. That's okay. There's not a thing wrong with that either. We'll reevaluate that when we're. Um, so, so, yeah, so I'm not. So 40. when I say like. I'm essentially just giving my opinion of something. I don't think any less of anybody else for doing whatever the fuck they want to do. You know, that, that's cool. Like, I think, so to me, like, knife play is oh. totally fucking crazy. To me, I could never. But if you enjoy that shit, you enjoy the fuck out of it. Tell me all about it, but I'm good. Like, that's how I mean, like, to do it respectfully, to give my opinion of it, but I'm not judging you. Or the act. It's just not in my repertoire. And there's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the uh, don't judge the person, judge the act was the thing that I was reacting to. I got you. I got you. And I can understand that. Um, yeah. For sure. And then like Dream and Ray said, if, they're, if their yum is hurting people in a way that's non-consensual, then absolutely yuck it. Then they're yucky, um, yeah. Yuck their face. We we call that uh, intervention. If someone starts trying to do something like that to you, yuck their entire body. Mm -hmm. Eat the yuck. <laughs> um, but no, that's what. So like, and when in the context of it being something harmful to someone. Treat them like absolute dog shit. Whatever. Mm. I, I fully endorse being just awful to somebody that's trying to do harm to somebody. Um, but it, it's like I said, I've got a, a, a friend of mine is 100% vegan. Like, has, not like because, you know, she thinks puppies are pretty and she loves chickens and stuff like that. No, it's. She just found it was healthier for her growing up. Like she was mm -hmm. vegan before it was cool, you know, the, the hipster phrase. She was vegan before it was cool. But 
she made dinner one night and was like, I went there to, to hang out for a little bit and it was it was pretty good. She made couscous. Never never had that before. It kind of made me think of uh, cream of wheat, but like not. I don't know how to explain it. Hmm. But you know, she was willing and happy to make me something that I would actually eat. I still tried what she had. I was like, it's like you know, no different than me eating vegetables. But it was not. For me. I could not live off of it. And we we talked about that that night. And she's like, oh yeah, no. She's like, I wouldn't want you to. You'd lose all that. We're not losing all that. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's, <laughs> dream feels called out. <laughs> But I think it's important to, no matter what you do, when you disagree with somebody or you think differently of what they're doing, as we said, as long as it's not harmful, please do so respectfully. Oh, yes. Easy, easy. It's, <laughs> it, it's all about. Oh, whole much. Listen, we're supposed to be over with. My <laughs> brain is on other mode. Oh, we are actually over. Okay. I heard the word genitals a couple times and I did not burst out. In song, I heard all kinds of songs tonight, and I did, and I did good. Um, exploration. One more thing I'll say on it specifically. Um, Bring a backpack. <laughs> Dora the Explorer. Um, so I'm speaking directly to my my cis hetero men. A finger in the ass does not make you gay, as long as it's a woman doing it. Your buddy putting a finger in your ass while you're hanging out at the bar, you, you can't no homo that out. That's just like, that's just gay. It's, it is what it is. Congratulations, you learned something new about yourself. But if your your partner wants to do that in the bedroom, by all means, explore it. Have fun, as long as you're willing to consent to it. I get tired of hearing that when people are like, would you take a finger in the ass? I'm like, fuck, yeah, I would. Like, well, that's gay. Like, no, it's like absolutely not by definition. <laughs> if it's a woman or the other binary gender opposite you. Right. right. Not at all gay. <laughs> if it's anybody else, some flavor of fruity. Right. Yeah. You know. And have at it, you know. If you want to fucking explore that shit, have it. Have a night of exploration with that. I mean, yeah. It's, uh, I, I need to, I don't know, I need to just find more of my, I, I used to have a couple of my super straight friends. You know, we talked about that one night, but the, 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 yeah, the super straights, they don't even think about gay porn. They don't even think about anything gay ever. Definitely ever. don't think about trans people. <laughs> but like, those people, I love. I love them like in a in a pity kind of way, because you can make them so uncomfortable so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I had one. We'd all be fucking around, and just just walk by like in close quarters, and like my hip or something. Like I wouldn't intentionally do it, but like my hip or any part of my body would like graze his butt if he was turned away from me. Mixed. And you would think that I had just like tried to rip his pants down and just show him the time of his life. He's made don't touch me like that. Like, fuck, we'll move. Like, I'm trying to walk through this narrow ass passageway. But I said behind. What do you want me to do about it? <laughs> if someone says behind, flatten up against whatever safe surface you can so that right. they have room to move. Fuck I, <laughs> I've communicated my position. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I will always love people like that. Like the people that are so, they almost seem insecure in their sexuality. And they so are. <laughs> They're like, like, they buy into like the, the hateful like propaganda against uh -huh. specific groups. So they can't endorse that part of themselves. So they like perform the opposite or what they think is the opposite. <laughs> oh man. The ones that truly like being straight pegged in the ass but won't ever admit to it or talk about it outside of 
right? Even though it's not gay because it's their girlfriend doing it. Just be open. Right, just enjoy your life. Uh, any closing thoughts from anyone? You don't have to be a dick to people who are... <coughs> so, yeah, that's my closing thought. Don't be a dick. Don't, be a don't not explore things because people are shitty, but do not explore things your partner doesn't consent to. Mm -hmm. okay. Dead. At least with that partner. Absolutely. <coughs> and I'm going to end it with once to try, twice to know. Mm. <laughs> that that's like my, that's sums it all up for me as far as exploration goes. Okay. You want a better closing thought? Mm -hmm. I got you. So communicate everything, have consent in the way that it is expressed between you and the other person whether that is from an understood feeling a conversation a text message a written note safe words however you need to express your consent or a specific piece of clothing or a specific piece of clothing if i come home and you're in the red lingerie that means it's time to get down then nobody has to initiate it all you had to do is put them closed And then as far as exploring, get feedback. I think that's an important one that we really didn't, we, we kind of touched on, but get feedback. If you like something, tell your partner you like that. If you don't like it, tell them you don't like it. And at the end of the day, that's still, it all links back to communication. Mm -hmm. None of these things are possible without communication. Well, uh, I, I think that's a good spot to hit end. Absolutely. I was going to tell you guys Monday. what we have for next week, but next I don't have it pulled up. So is going to be announced soon. And next week is already scheduled. So if they're looking at the you. YouTube channel, they can see what it's going to be. Oh, what he said. So, but <laughs> good night, everybody. Sweetest dreams. Good night. Are we back? Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>